A question I get a lot is, do I have any injuries or niggles or does does anything kind of impede me from training? And probably some astute viewers of the training vlogs over the years will recognize that yes, I do. And the nature of elite performance, or rather progressing your performance as much as possible, is pain is going to be very likely experienced. Now, you'll have training blocks where you feel much better than other times. You'll have much less pain. But in my experience with both myself and athletes of all levels, when you're trying to progress, pain is part of increased performance. Now, if we were looking for general health, if we were looking for just trying to be healthier with maybe some hypertrophy, strength training and cardiovascular work, we'd probably feel pretty good. I think one of the most consistent and common questions I get maybe on Instagram or on YouTube comments is, do I have any injuries or niggles or do I have any pain? And any astute viewers or long-term viewers of the training vlogs will know that the answer is most definitely yes. Yes, I do. Anytime you're trying to push your performance to new levels and you're trying to push it as efficiently and as quickly as feasible you're always going to run into places where you will have pain now some training blocks will have more or less pain than others but just know that you probably can't get away with getting high level performance or higher level performance relative to your own performance without something going to hurt now that might be any number of things it could be the same thing every training block or it could be something different every time but no that pain is part of the process. It's very rare that you'll see an entire training block go by without something hurting a little bit. Sometimes things will go away quickly. Sometimes things will come back aggressively. The This is the way it's always been. It's the way I've seen with all the athletes we've interacted with. And it's the way it's been since essentially day one of weightlifting. The improving performance hurts. Now you can do stuff to mitigate it, but just know that I do hurt as well, but we just got to get on with it. So if you're hurting or you're in pain at the moment, know that it is very common. So here we have some cleans from last weekend. So relatively happy with these cleans again. So technically I'm very, very happy with how they're moving. They weren't as fast as I would have liked them to be or as light as I would have liked. Uh, focusing on a lot of different things, and we'll see that in a minute, and some heavy block cleans, how those things transferred over a lot more efficiently but things i'm focusing on toe straight forward in the catch position because it makes a huge difference to how fast i catch the bounce i'm not turning my toes out too much here's some tops at 140 really relax my arms i was not achieving that greatly in this session but i was focusing on it as much as possible and then of course i was focusing on pulling under as fast as i could so mm, they could have been better but it's just some honest to God, straight up volume and work done for the clean at a moderately heavy percentage relative to my current quote unquote max. So it is what it is. I did a couple of singles at it and that's what needs to be done. So working on those as much as possible, those relaxed arms, keeping the shoulders over and pulling under fast, straightforward toe catch position. Last one, best set. Now here is some block cleans I did uh, two days ago. So the first one playing here is a 130. And on this 130, I talked about it on my Instagram, but I focus on the weight too much instead of the movement. Now you'll see the second video playing is 130 kilos again for a triple, but a much better set because I focused on the movement and not the weight. So it's focusing on relaxed arms, really fast barbell and toes forward in the catch position. And it's a huge improvement. Now. The most I've block cleaned actually so far is 140. And this last set here is 140 for a triple. I did about seven working sets of triples before I got to this 140. And very, very happy with how this is moving. So relaxed arms, fast bar, toes forward in that catch position, moving as quickly as I can. And super happy with that set. Now, that was nice progression and everything is progressing relatively well. And despite those pains, things are going quite good. So after those cleans I did, so those 140 cleans you saw from the floor in that same session, I kind of felt like doing some snatches. Now, this is my second time snatching in the last, since February, so in the last nearly four months. And I was originally wearing my shoes 
my knee sleeves. My knee sleeves were kind of annoying me. And so I was just warming up with some reps. Uh, and I snatched the week before and I did 100 kilos. And I was like, right, I, meant I could beat that a little bit this week. So warming up, wearing my Deadpool t-shirt. It was after the cleans. Wasn't in any way fatigued realistically for the snatches, uh, which is quite interesting. So I was like, let me just let me just dick around with this and wear some just my socks and take off my shoes uh, because I hate when the knee sleeves are rolled down like a crossfitter. And so the bottom position was kind of feeling weird. I was just trying to feel it out and stretch a little bit just to get my elbows an extra and shoulders an extra stretch. As I mentioned, I would be working on those a lot and I've been working on them a lot of soft tissue, a lot of voodoo flossing, and it's definitely getting better. It's not as good as it should be, but it is improving. Uh, I've been at it literally every day and it is improving drastically. I need to keep working on it, need to keep working on the shoulder and the elbows. Lower body mobility, superb, as you can see from these snatches, but the overhead needs to get better. It looks better on these already, but I do need to improve it a lot, the shoulder and those elbows. So snatching barefoot was just sticking around. I was quite enjoying how I was feeling. And I was like, let's just basically max out or go quite heavy. So 70 kilos here, uh, weights felt quite good. Technique feels like I never stop snatching. Uh, obviously I've been training a lot. So physically I'm in shape, but just not in shape for snatching. Now 90 kilos was really focusing on relaxing my arms and keeping my shoulders over off the floor. Moved on to 100. So obviously 100 is very light relatively. So a little bit of arm tension. And then you can see the overhead position there was a little bit different side to side from the changes in turn rotation. And then I topped out at a 110, and this 110 actually turned out to be the best snatch of all of them. Now, I'm still going to keep working hard in that overhead position. I might snatch once a week or so, or I'll see how I'm feeling, depending on how the other lifts, my main priorities are going. Then, following day, we moved on to some behind the neck jerks. And again, really trying to focus on fixing that tricep. Uh, the tricep tendons are quite inflamed uh, in the overhead position, so really got to keep working on it. And they are improving. Like, they were sore changing a gear stick, which is my own fault for neglecting it for so long. And as you remember from the training vlogs, I did put a lot of work into it initially, but then as they improved, I eased off a small bit, and that is my own fault. Split jerks are getting better, the behind the neck jerks. The hip or the butt wink is improving a lot so really worked on that with Anton if you remember from the last training vlog where I'm just trying to dip straight down and come straight back up without any butt wink it's something I've always kind of had a little bit on some sets and it's something I have to really try hard to work on so here's 140 on the behind the neck jerks and I'm relatively happy how these are moving uh, the wind was taken out of my sails a little bit when I was sick the week before last so I'm just trying to recover the momentum in these and make sure we're still going in the right direction dip was a little bit short in these and a little bit too slow in these 150s but I wanted to top out at around 160 kilos and quite happy with the bar speed overhead just need to work in those positions and the overhead position and work again on the dip position so then we moved on to some squats so on this you may remember from the 200 for 5 I did, which was quite fast. I was actually just sick around that time or slightly after, and it's kind of knocked my squat down a little bit. You might also remember I said around hip flexor tightness and pain around that time. Well, the left side is perfect, but the right side is a lot sore and have a lot of hip flexor pain when I'm squatting. Uh, if it sounds like I'm laughing, I am, because I'm laughing through the pain, and so I really need to address that hip flexor pain as well. What I'm planning to do with the squat is I milked as much as I could out of the extended benefits of doing all the volume from the RTA. And while Japan is in a couple of weeks only, I am going to restart the RTA next week as I've pushed it to the limit in terms of the amount of heavy squats I can frequently doing. You know, I started with a 200 kilo squat. We're back up to 250. Great improvements. If I wasn't going to Japan, I would have just reran the RTA again and probably taken a bit more of a downtime and not pushed the squat so much after the 250 but I am trying to milk it as much as possible. So I'm going to just rerun the RTA from next week. Probably going to start barefoot again, just for, just give my lower body a bit of a chance to do something different. And I'll use 250 as my maximum. And we'll just, essentially just going to keep running those iterations until I get to the number I get to, because there's, if it works, if it ain't broke, why fix it? You know, yeah, that's the saying people use. No, if it ain't broke, why fix it? So I'm just going to 
rerun it from next week. I might do one more squat session at the end of this week, but you got to know when you're beat. You got to know when the momentum has been milked, when you've gotten all the way. So I am kind of calling it here at the moment. The other lifts are going well. And so I just need to acknowledge and not waste time training. Going to restart the RTA two sessions a week and keep tipping away with that again. So thanks for everyone for watching and I appreciate all the views and the comments. Thank you.